In my iPhone 15 Pro review, I could be fooled into thinking that videos taken on the iPhone will take it on the mirror's camera. So I thought, could I be fooled into thinking that photos taken on the iPhone will take it on the mirror's camera? How close or far away is the iPhone 15 Pro from mirrorless cameras? So to answer this question, my friends Luigi and Carla join me to find out with a classic shootout. Before we start, this video is not scientific or professional by any means. It's a simple comparison between the iPhone 15 Pro and mirrorless cameras. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Upwards and I'm with my friend Luigi. So today we're going to be doing a shootout between the iPhone 15 Pro and a couple of different mirrorless cameras. So here we've got your um, Sony H730 and I've got my own Canon EOS R10. So we're going to be taking a look at how far or how close the iPhone 15 Pro's cameras are to modern mirrorless cameras. So let's get shooting and see what the results are. For the phone, we'll be using 48 megapixel Raw Max images and you'll be shooting in... I will be shooting in Canon C-Raw, which is Canon's new compressed raw for Epton. And how many megapixels would be favorite? This is a 24 megapixel uh, Digic 10 uh, sensor. Alright, so because we know that mirrorless cameras already have an edge, there's going to be a 48 megapixels, so the iPhone will have a resolution advantage, but We'll see if that actually makes any difference in the real world when we compare it to a mirrorless camera. Yeah, I accidentally checked up first. <laughs> use the use the nose. You can tell it's a key. Oh, why is it? I... So one of the cool things about the iPhone 15 Pro is that you can actually switch between three different focal lengths on the main sensor, so you can do 24 mil. 28 mil and 35 mil, so it makes it pretty useful for comparing different focal lengths. So so far we have taken a few shots of a lot of different flowers in this garden, just kind of just testing out the colors and the depth of field, because that's one of the weak points of the iPhone is that taking photos from further away you kind of lose the depth of field. So when you take photos from pretty close, for example with flowers, you do get a nice bokeh around the uh, the object, which is the flowers. So it's pretty good to compare with mirrorless cameras. Um, but we will try shoot some further away objects and kind of take some photos of a distance and see what that looks like. Um, but I do have a feeling that the iPhone is going to probably fail a little bit when it comes to the mirrorless cameras. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that Luigi has mentioned is that when you're shooting on iPhones, all the free lenses are fixed. So that means unlike a mirrorless camera, we can use a zoom lens where the actual quality stays the same when you zoom in and out the iphone has a digital zoom when you switch between each of the three lenses so from 24 to the 77 you are actually digitally cropping into the actual image itself which means you're losing quality which mirrorless cameras with a zoom lens don't have the cool thing is that yes you do get a 48 megapixel camera so when you do crop in you can still get pretty decent results but when you compare that to the actual mirrorless camera with the actual ability to zoom in without any quality degradation, you do see there's a bit of a difference there. Okay, so moving on from taking photos, we're going to start taking pictures of sort of like a landscape view. So we've got a few trees over here. Uh, we're just going to take a few shots and see how they look. Welcome everyone. So today, what, why am I saying today? I already told you guys what's happening in this video. Let's take two, take two, take take take. <laughs> okay, so now we're at the river to take a few more shots. This time we got a bit more things to work around with. We got the river, obviously, so some water for some reflections. We'll see how the dynamic range handles it on both the phones and the mirrorless cameras. And of course, the sky is down a bit more, so we're gonna take a bit of a different lighting. 
So let's take a look at what these photos and these cameras can do. Okay, right, guys. So we've just wrapped up our photo shoot. The iPhone is kind of keeping up in some areas, especially when it comes to like closer subjects. But when it comes to objects that are further at the distance, the iPhone seems to be a bit more sharpened when it compares to the various cameras. But yeah, we're gonna take a look at home. I'm gonna take a look at all of the results and compare them. Right then, see you guys there. Starting off with close-up shots of flowers, right off the bat, I don't think you will be able to tell which was taken or what. In these close-ups, the iPhone does a good job of giving a lot of details while not over-sharpening. These images of the flowers retain all the highlights and shadows, maybe even more than the Canon in these scenarios. The bokeh looks natural with some nice round circles in the background. I think it's the same for videos as it is for photos. What really gives away that a video or photo was taken on the iPhone is the over-sharpness. What really impresses me is that these shots don't have any over-sharpness and these photos look soft, smooth and natural. If someone were to give me these two photos and ask me which one was taken on an iPhone, I would be a bit stumped. Zooming closer into each of these photos is hard to tell the difference. They both look incredibly similar, in fact. Now with any shoot, you almost always have edited your photos. So that's what I'm going to do and here are the same images edited. After editing these photos, we can see a slight difference. Using Pro Raw, we can really push these colors to match the Canon and Sony, making these photos look excellent. One way to really make the iPhone images look closer to the mirrors cameras is to lower down the contrast, making the image more softer. The sharpness isn't exaggerated and is smooth enough to look like it was taken on a mirrors camera. Taking photos of objects close by are definitely where the iPhone keeps up with the Canon R10. Next up, we're taking a look at mid shots which turns out to be a bit more different from the close-ups we've been taking. One of the first things you'll notice is the lack of bokeh or depth of field in these images. Now that is simply due to the iPhone not being able to create background blur from such a small sensor. As soon as objects start getting further away from the sensor, the amount of natural blur created is very little, even if the aperture is wide open. In this photo, we're starting to see a loss of softness and smoothness on the iPhone. While the Canon retains a nice level of natural softness, the iPhone is starting to sharpen the image to the point it looks artificial. In this other photo, the flowers on the iPhone look sharper and more detailed than the Canon, but it loses the natural look that the Canon offers. Take these flowers, the definition around the petals are super sharp, and the contrast is very obvious. On the other side, one advantage the iPhone has is its resolution. Looking at these side posts, even though the mirrors cameras have a more blurred background and a more natural look, the iPhone wins a mile with resolution. The details and sharpness can be seen clearly in the signpost, thanks to the 48 megapixel main sensor. In all honesty, this is the only advantage the iPhone has, with both the Canon R10 and Sony A7 III packing in much lower megapixel sensors. However, upon editing these photos, the iPhone actually captures enough information to allow me to be able to match the colors to the Sony A7 and the Canon R10, which is pretty impressive. So besides the point that it doesn't quite get that book of effect and the smoothness and the sharpness contrast isn't quite the same as mirrorless cameras, the colors are looking pretty good and comparable, which is pretty cool to see. Let's take a look at further shots. Now this is where I expect to see the biggest difference between the iPhone and the mirrorless cameras. One thing we can see is the over sharpness being introduced into these images on the iPhone. While the two mirrorless cameras do a good job of retaining details and a more natural smooth look, the iPhone has started to introduce a slight artificial oversharpening to its photos. When we zoom in closer, we can see why. It's starting to blend pixels together and details are being lost. It's sharpening these pixels together to make it seem more detailed. But when we compare it to the Canon's image, you can tell some information has been lost, especially with the colors. The Canon manages to retain the yellow petals within the tree's leaves, while the iPhone has these white spots. Now let's edit these photos and see if there are any differences. Editing in post does allow us to push these colors further, and the iPhone with these raw images holds a lot of options for us. However, it doesn't remove the over sharpened look and effect. And with these images, I think it's clear who the winner is. So before we continue, I want to quickly talk about Gamersco, who reached out to collab on this video. 
Now, Gemsco is an online subscription sharing service that allows you to get access to your favorite subscription services for much cheaper. How so, you may be asking? Glad you asked. Gemsco operates by purchasing a premium account and splitting the payments between each user, giving everyone access to their favorite subscription services for much less. Currently, you can get access to Netflix, Disney+, Spotify Premium, Tidal, and much more. If you want to give Gemsco a try, check out the link in my description to get 5% off Netflix and 2% off any other services. Now back to the video. Alright, so let's wrap things up. So the iPhone is pretty good in some situations. In close-ups, the iPhone does do a good job of keeping up with the mirrorless cameras. But once you start getting further away, mid shots start to look a bit more sharpened. And you could compare them to mirrorless cameras with a high f-stop. But to be honest, it isn't quite mirrorless camera level yet. This is even more amplified when we take a look at the further shots. Those shots they really look over sharpened on the iPhone and the mirrorless cameras do a way better job at keeping the details while having a nice soft smooth look. While it isn't to say that the iPhone has lost in every single category, it does still win with its 48 megapixel camera, which is usually a higher resolution than most mirrorless cameras on the market. For example, my Sony a7 III or Luigi's Canon R10, which are both around 20, 24 megapixels. Because the iPhone photography, I think is perfect for taking a lot of close up shots, but it isn't really good for portraits or for anything that's going to be acquiring landscapes or really far away shots. It just isn't quite good enough. And I still think the mirrorless cameras still have a huge advantage over iPhones, especially with their larger sensor, which is the main issue why iPhones have that over process and over sharpened look when it comes to images and objects that are shot from far away. It just can't do it. So the iPhone is still limited and it isn't taking over mirrorless cameras anytime soon, especially for photography. However, the iPhone 15 Pro's cameras have surpassed point and shoot cameras, which is still an impressive feat today for any smartphone. And while it might not take over mirrorless cameras, the time might come soon. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Upwards and special thanks to Luigi and Carla for helping me out on this video. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one.